In this chapter we will get our hands dirty, so to speak, and program our very first experiment. For this I've chosen the public goods game. This is a famous economic game that uh, has been studied many times, uh, predominantly in experiments. So I'm going to describe the game, give you an idea of how many subjects there are, how they interact, and what their motivations could be, what their incentives are. And then we'll actually program the game. And I think you will be surprised by how quickly we can create our own first experiment in Setri. Once we've finished programming it, we're going to test our treatment. And by doing so, we will create uh, actual data, we'll create output, which we can then analyze. So I'm going to show you how to open uh, and interpret the output that Zetri produces for you. And finally, we're going to create a very short, um, basically non-existent questionnaire to round out um, all of the steps that we need in Zetri to conduct a complete experiment. The experiment we're going to program is the so-called public goods game. And in our game here, we will have groups of four subjects. So each group uh, is going to be four subjects, but we can run the experiment with more than one group at the same time. Now, each subject will start out in the experiment with an initial endowment of um, 20 experimental currency units, so 20 units of cash, $20, for example, if you, if you imagine, but imaginary um, experimental dollars in the game. Now, I'll call that WI, where I stands for the individual subject. Now, the second thing we need in this um, game is the contribution of the subject. So each subject can choose how much of this initial endowment. So as you can see, uh, any, any number between zero and this initial endowment of 20 currency units, uh, they can decide to contribute to um, a joint project, if you want, a group project. So all four members of the group can make their contribution decisions. And then the profit of each subject depends on or can be calculated as, so pi i stands for the profit of subject i. Um, and this equals, we start out with the 20 in initial endowment. We subtract the contribution to the joint project. And then we sum up all the contributions of all the members in the group, divide them by n, which is four, the, the number of members of the group. So we basically calculate the average contribution in the group, multiply it by 1.6 and add it to our, well, to the initial endowment minus the contribution, and that gives the profit. So what this means is that um, the more people in a group contribute to this public good, the higher is the total payoff because whatever is contributed gets multiplied by 1.6. So it actually grows before it's paid out again. So at the group level, at the aggregate level, uh, it's rational or it's no, it's, it's, it's um, optimal to compute, to contribute maximally because that gives the highest total outcome, the to to highest total payoff. But at the individual level, of course, every um, currency unit you contribute here gets divided by four and multiplied by 1.6. So you get back less than one unit from this unit you contribute. Because of course, um, your unit or the, the, um, the effect of your unit, and that's 1.6 divided by four, which is uh, 0 0.4, um, gets distributed to all of the uh, participants in the group, so all group members. Everybody gets 0 0.4 from the one unit you contribute. So at the total, at the aggregate level, it's good for you co to contribute um, because that increases total payoffs, but at the individual level, it does not make sense to contribute because you actually lose money by doing so. So from an individual perspective, it would be optimal for you if everybody else paid in to contribute to the joint project, but you didn't. And, but of course that's the same for all the other group members. So there is a dilemma here. Yeah, that's a classical economic experiment. There is a dilemma. Um, the individual, individually optimal choice is socially suboptimal and the other way around. So there are these conflicting motivations here. And um, we can use an experiment to see how people deal with this problem, with this dilemma, what choices they actually make. 
And for that, we open a new set tree treatment. And when you open set tree, so actually the set tree.exe file, so the executable file, um, this is the window that you see essentially. Yeah, you see a new untitled treatment. You see that we have a background here. Um, we have some entries here that are tables. I'll come back to that. We have an active screen with something in it and a waiting screen with something in it. And now let's see uh, what we can do with that. From now on, we actually start programming in Setree. So I would like you to pause the video whenever I say so and actually take the same steps that I'm showing on the slide or that I'm asking you to do on the slides and in the video in your set tree because it's very important that you actually do the work that you interact with the software um, for you to gain the experience uh, to be able to become able to program your own experiments it doesn't help if you just watch the video yeah so I'll ask you to actually do it so um, in your set tree now is the time to um, open the background so you double click background and then you see this general parameters window here this dialog field and i want you to make these settings here because these are the settings we're going to need for our experiment why do we do this well here we can set how many subjects in total we want to have in our experiment so let's say we have a lab with 24 computers then we would enter 24 here and since we wanted groups of four subjects, that means we, can, uh, we get a total of six groups of four subjects in the 24. Now, we don't want any practice periods for the time being. No? We want 10 paying periods. So what we basically do is we have our subjects play the same game, game 10 times in a row. Uh, so we get repeated observations from them. They can also learn over time and so on. And down here, uh, we determine what payouts our subjects get. So we tell Cytri that we want the exchange rate from actual currency. I mean, Cytri was programmed or is being programmed in Zurich, so it's in Swiss francs. But whatever your currency is, euros, dollars, uh, whatever, um, consider that your currency divided by the experimental currency units. So 0.07 here would mean that um, one currency unit, uh, one economic uh, experimental currency unit corresponds to seven cents in if, if your currency is dollars or, or euros um, or rappen if it's uh, actually Swiss franc. So 0 0.07 uh, of your actual currency equals one experimental currency unit. We can also set a so-called lump sum payment, which is basically a fixed payment that every subject gets. And in this case, you can set it in terms of experimental currency units. And you can set another lump sum payment, which in this case is called the show up fee, which is set in terms of francs. So the important distinction here is do you want to enter it in experimental currency units or in francs? And Setri will then at the end of the experiment just add this, um, this amount to the payout. Now, um, the next thing I want you to do is create to create a new program. So uh, in Setri, you click on log file that's in the that's below background in the um, in the list of tables. There is one that lowest the, the, the bottom uh, table is called log file. You click it once and then you click treatment new program. And that uh, tells Setri that you want to uh, create a new program. This is a, well, an element in Setri uh, below the log file, because whatever you have selected in Setri, when you, end, when you uh, create something new, determines where the new element goes. The new element always goes below the, uh, your selection. And in this program window, this is basically some code that you want Setri to execute. In this program window, you enter uh, well, this information here. Um, be careful, so upper, lower, upper and lower case, so the capital E here and lowercase e here, they are different, so it's important to be careful here and to, to make sure you have the spelling correct if you want. Um, at the same time, having a, a blank here between the, the variable name, efficiency factor, and the equal sign, that doesn't matter. OK, 
Okay, so you can have a blank here, you don't have to have a blank here. The same here, you can have a blank here, you can not have one, that doesn't really matter. So now I would like you to pause the program and actually, um, well, program this. Okay, I hope you have all programmed this. Now, um, let's have a look at this program and see what it does. Well, we first define a, a variable called efficiency factor and set it to a value of 1.6. And the semicolon at the end always, well, basically closes every, every command or ends every line of commands. So um, it makes sense in, in any programming language and environment um, to use variables as much as possible. So instead of uh, using 1.6 at multiple places in your program, uh, for example, for the payoff calculation, makes sense to define a variable at a central location. So in this case, in this program in the background, uh, set it to 1.6. And that means if you ever in the future want to change this efficiency factor, there is exactly one place where you need to do that, which is here in this program. And everywhere else you, where you need this, you would not enter 1.6, but would use the variable name efficiency factor. And Setry would look up um, the, the value in this variable and use that uh, for its calculations. So the same goes for the endowment. You set the endowment equal to 20. Those are the 20 currency units in, in endowment that you get at the beginning. We set the contribution to this strange value of minus 77777. Now, um, this is something that I do, this specific number. What I want you to remember is to always initialize your variables. So we will use a variable called contribution later on. This was the C in the equation on the previous slide. We will use this later on, but we don't know what value to give it now because the subjects should enter what contribution they want to make. So we initialize, we set this variable to some uh, initial value, in this case, this minus 777, uh, just to make sure that it has some value. And also we choose this strange value here so that if we encounter this value at any point in the set tree output, we know that after the initialization of the variable, Setry never, never overwrote this variable. There was never any change made to it. And that sometimes helps us trace uh, errors in our programming. So we initialize this variable. We initialize this variable sum c, which will be the sum of all contributions. Remember that is uh, that features in the profit calculation. And finally, uh, we set this variable n, which what does it do? It calculates something. It takes um, the members of a group. Well, it, it basically counts all the people that are in the same group. Let's leave it at that. Um, we'll, we'll talk about this in more detail later on, but I think for, for your understanding, that's enough at this point. So in case you didn't find this, um, you just double click the background, then you get this general parameters uh, dialog window where you can set the number of subjects and of groups, the number of practice and paying periods, and the payment details. Okay, so that's why you set that. And then, as I said, you need to select the log file because we want the program that we now insert to go below that. And whatever you highlight or select in Setry, um, when you then uh, enter an, or create a new stage tree element, it is placed below that. So we go to new program, click new program. And as you can see, the program um, is located here below the log file, which, and I'll go through this later on, uh, means that when Setry starts, it will go through the background, through these tables, and then immediately execute the program. So this program will be run right at the beginning of the experiment, setting all the variables we need for the experiment later on. The next step is that we add our first stage, which is basically one screen that the subjects see. So you select the background, you can highlight the background, you don't double click it, and then you click treatment, new stage. And then you see this uh, stage um, creation dialog. And um, we need to give this stage a name. So we're gonna name it contribution entry here because uh, this is the screen where 
will want our subjects to enter how much they are willing to contribute to the joint project. And we leave everything else as is. And I'll come back later uh, to what all these settings mean. But for the time being, we really focus on programming the tutorial, getting a rough understanding of um, what happens in Setry, how, how things work, basically. Have a first um, success when we can test that and see that everything works. And this is really not uh, a lot of work to get this whole um, program to work. And then we go back and look at all the details and all the settings and uh, get a better understanding of what um, these uh, settings allow us to do. And once we create the stage, it's um, added to the stage tree here below the background because the stage is at the same level as the background. So if you select the background and click Treatment New Stage, the next stage is below that. Yeah? So the background is like a stage a little bit. So that's why um, it goes below that because um, whatever we enter, whatever we create goes below the previous element of the same level if you want. Don't worry too much. Yeah? It's, it's gonna be, you're going to be fine with this. So here we have the new um, stage. And something to notice maybe in the stage tree, you have these little pluses or minuses which allow you to um, expand or um, contract uh, elements. And for example, in this case, you can look into the, the program without actually open and having to open it. Yeah? So that's sometimes helpful. So the stage we have added is like an empty container. Yeah? Um, nothing is yet on it. And what we now want to do is we want to put all the elements on it that the subjects need for their contribution entry. So they need some output. So we need to tell them what they uh, are supposed to do on this screen. We need to provide a field where they can actually make their contribution choice. Um, and finally, we need a, a button which they can click to say, OK, that's that's my contribution. So we start by adding a box. Um, every stage is organized into boxes. And the first box for the first box, we select the active screen. Uh, again, I'll tell you later what the difference between the active and the waiting screen is. But the active screen very shortly is where, where people make choices and, and interact with the program. So in the active screen, we select the active screen and um, click treatment, new box, and then standard box. There are multiple box types, we'll cover them. Um, but for now, we'll just select the standard box and click OK. And uh, in this standard box, so we leave all the settings in the standard box as they are we add an item. So we select the new standard box, click treatment, new item, and then we fill in the information you can see here. We fill in a label, which will be your endowment. This is just a, some text that's put on screen. And then uh, we'll display the value that is in the variable endowment. Yeah, so we're going to display 20. Remember, the endowment was set to 20, but we don't put 20 in here. Maybe we could, but we don't want to. We want to use our variables because that makes us more flexible later on whenever we want to change uh, the initial endowment. So we say uh, endowment here, and then we need to specify a layout, which will just be uh, a one. And once again, I'll come back to what this means later on. Now, below this first output item, which just displayed the endowment that the subject has, we'll add an input item where they can make their contribution choice. So we'll uh, select the first item, which should be highlighted anyway uh, when you just closed it. And then we click Treatment New Item. And that gives us again the same box. We fill in your contribution to the project. Now we want the variable where the contribution should be saved in. So we put contribution here. That's the name of the variable we want to use. And as layout, we again choose one. And then we select this input. Um, we make this tick mark in the input box. And that reveals these fields down here. And in these fields, we need to specify what kind of inputs are allowed in this item. And specifically, we need to specify the minimum and the maximum. And in our case, the minimum should be zero. So they should be allowed to 
um, contribute nothing to the project or any amount up to their endowment. Uh, again, if we put 20 in here and we ever want to change this, then we have to go to all of these fields and change it. If we just put endowment in here, we can change the initial endowment in one place and it will update uh, throughout the program. So we set the contribution to be between zero and uh, the endowment. And finally, we need a button. We need a button a social subject can actually confirm and, and submit their choice. So we select the second item. Again, it should be highlighted. If you just clicked OK here, then by default it's still highlighted. And then we click Treatment, New Button. And we can choose a button name, which will um, well, default to OK. And then you click OK in this dialog, and now you have your button. Now we're all done with our contribution entry stage. So what else do we need? Well, we need to um, calculate and then show the subjects the result, their profit in this case. So we add a new stage called profit display. And you follow the same steps as you did when you created the contribution entry stage. So if you don't remember, then go back a few slides and have a look at that. Okay, create a new stage below the contribution entry stage. Uh, and this new stage should be called profit display. And in this profit display stage, before we display anything, we actually need to calculate the profits that subjects made. So we select the profit display stage and then click treatment new program. And in this program, um, I want you to enter this calculation here. And um, just to give you an idea, what we're doing here, or to talk you through this a little bit. Um, we calculate first the sum of all contributions of the people that are in the same group. Yeah? So we do this group wise. And for each group, we, cal we calculate this sum C variable. And then we calculate the profit uh, of the subject, which is the initial endowment minus the contribution plus the efficiency factor times this new sum c variable yeah the total contributions uh, of all members of the group including the subject in that we're currently calculating this for divided by n the number of people in the group and um that is exactly the same equation as we had uh, on the on, on one of the first slides where i showed you what the game was going to be about after we've calculated the profits uh, of the, each subject, we now need to display them. So we add a new standard box to the active screen of the profit display stage. And again, um, if you don't remember how to do that, then go back a few minutes and, and have a look at it again. And in this standard box, we insert display items. So items like the first item on the, in the contribution entry stage where we just said, your endowment and display the endowment. Well, now we're going to display uh, the contribution that the subject made, so the own contribution. Then the sum of all contributions. Remember the variable we used for that was sum C, so we can use that variable in this item to display the sum of all contributions. And then finally, we display the subject's income for the period which we saved in the profit variable. And remember, these variable names are case sensitive. So profit needs to be spelled with a capital P, for example. And finally, we insert a continue button so subjects can actually um, leave this screen, this stage. And then finally, because now we're actually done with programming our entire experiment, congratulations, please save your treatment. Now, very important, always save uh, from time to time so you don't lose any work. So save the treatment and this will um, create a .ctt file. How do you save? You click File, Save, as in any other program. And if you've done everything else correctly, then your stage tree now should look something like this. Yeah. Remember we had we made some settings in the background, then we created this uh, program in the background by selecting log file and, and entering this program. Then we created our comp contribution entry stage with one display item, one in -play items, uh, input item, so one output item, one input item, and you can see here it says out and in to distinguish the two. And you also see the variables that are being displayed. So even without opening these items, you already get a lot of information. 
and finally an OK button. And then we had we created the profit calculation stage. And in this stage, before we go to the active screen where we display all this information, we need to calculate it. When we do this in this program, we calculate some C and profit, and then we display to subjects their own contributions, the sum of all contributions in their group, and uh, their outcome, their profit for this period. And then they can click continue. And of course, if they click continue, remember we set the in the background that we wanted to have 10 periods. If they click continue, what happens is that they start from the beginning again. And so one very important element of set tree that I want to illustrate here is really that the, the, the order of execution of the program. Set tree really goes from top to bottom through this entire thing. So it starts in the background, makes the settings there. Remember, remember 10 periods and the exchange rate and all and the number of subjects and so on. Then it generates these tables. We'll not talk about this now. Then it's going to run this program, define these variables. Then it's going to display this stage. Then it's going to display this stage. And if you click OK or continue down here, you start again from the from the top for the second period. So it always run through this really um, in sequence, as you can see it uh, in your stage tree in the set tree main window. Now that we finished programming our treatment, let's test it. Let's see whether it does what we expect it to. But before we do that, let's reduce the number of subjects in the background to four and the number of groups to one. Because otherwise we'll have to click, uh, make all the choices for each of the 24 subjects. And that's quite a lot of work. So it, it slows down our testing quite a bit. So for our first test, let's reduce the number of subjects uh, to four and the number of groups to one. And this way we test one group and only when everything works with one group, we once again go to, well, maybe first two groups and see whether everything works out then. And then we can go to 24 groups and run our final test before we actually head to the lab to run the experiment. Now, the next step is that we need to start some set leaves to do our testing. And there are multiple ways we can do that. The important thing is if we test, we run everything, both the set tree and the set leaves on the same computer, unless of course it's the final test before the experiment, which we should ideally run in the lab on the actual uh, PCs that we're gonna use in the experiment. But for the initial tests, we do this on our own PC. So we need to start set leaves there, multiple set leaves. And that means we need to give them unique names. And the first and simplest way we can do that is by creating uh, short leaves, uh, shortcuts. So use the Windows shortcut um, function to create shortcuts, shortcuts to the setleaf.exe file. And in the in this target field here in the shortcut, give the this this particular leaf a name. So name it for example first or client one or player one or whatever. And then create another shortcut for player two and another shortcut for player three and another for player four. So we need four of these shortcuts for four leaves. And we need to click all of them and open all of them to be able to run our experiment. But there are more convenient options. If you're watching this video as part of a course, a Cetri course by myself, then in the course materials, you'll find some uh, batch files. Um, if you're if you just found this video on the internet, then just head to my website and look there on the downloads, and you will find the same files that I'm going to talk about here. My website is at uh, academic.palan.biz.bits, um, and there on the downloads you find these files. Now the first batch file that I want to talk about is called Grow Leaves, and that's um, what we need to open set leaves on our computer. So if you double click Grow Leaves the, uh, on your web, uh, on your hard drive, it will open a little window and say how many um, set leaves do you want? And you can enter a number and it will open that many set leaves for you. And I provided the whole code for you here as well to look at it because it does a number of things besides just opening set leaves. And I want to quickly run you through them. The first is that it first um, kills uh, any existing set leaf processes. So if you still have set leaves running, when you run this uh, grow leaves shortcut, 
um, it will quickly shut down all the old set leaves and then open new set leaves. And it will open the new set leaves only with a limited size, so they will not cover your whole screen as they would if you just click the set leaf exit file. Um, they, are, they are somewhat smaller, usually it depends on your screen resolution, um, because this way you can still access your taskbar and everything, uh, and that makes testing easier. And you can actually adjust the size here. Yeah, so you can also, and that, that's good advice, set this to the exact resolution of the screens in your experimental lab. And this way, if you have, for example, a bigger screen in your, uh, on your uh, Word PC, uh, then you can easily simulate uh, what your treatment would look like on the lab PCs. And then it gives automatically, the, the batch file gives the set leaves names, unique names, subject one through N. Um, it, sets, it sets a certain font size and it sets a certain position, which means that the set leaf is not positioned. Remember, it doesn't cover the whole screen, so it's only a part of the screen and it's not positioned at the top left, but it, it has a little bit of a distance to, um, the, well, to the left and top of the screen. So that's it. It, with this, by just clicking once and entering a number, you can very quickly open as many set leaves as you need for your testing, and it will even close all set leaves for you. So that's very convenient, and you can create multiple copies of this grow leaves um, batch file that, for example, open different size set leaves or puts them in different positions. You can play around with that. Now, the other batch files that are in this in the resources are the kill leaves .bat. What does this do? Well, this just closes down all the set leaves. That can also be helpful sometimes. Then there is kill trees .bat, which uh, closes all set trees. Now you shouldn't normally do this, but sometimes when you close the set tree program, the process, the set tree.exe process will actually keep running in the background. I don't know what this is. It seems to be a bug in Windows. Um, but it does, and so you can just click this um, kill trees .bat and it will close the set tree in the background. And finally, kill plants .bat will do both uh, for you. So it will close down the set trees and the set leaves that you have running. Okay, now let's see um, how our treatment looks if we actually run it. Um, I've now set up my set tree. I've programmed my whole treatment here uh, and I've connected my set leaves. And to check whether that worked out, you can click run clients table and that will show you a little table that shows you the set leaves that are connected. And in this case, the names of my set leaves are client one, client two, client three, client four. Yeah, could also be player one or whatever, or the name of the computers if you're in a lab. But here I connected them using my grow leaves and I set it to give the names client one through four. And um, they're basically standing by, nothing is happening yet. Now I can head back here and click run start treatment or I click F5. And if I do that, well, I don't see anything happening, but I can click again to open the clients table and now I see that these subjects are actually currently in the contribution entry stage and the time is counting down for them. So let's see what they see. This is uh, my client one, and that is exactly the screen that we programmed for this subject. So we see um, they have an endowment of 20 or this subject now has an endowment of 20 and uh, can enter their contribution. Now, something to notice maybe by default, uh, and I'll come back to that later on, when the time runs out in a, in a period, we count it down from 30 to zero here, Setry still asks you to make the decision. So it does not force you to go on if you have to make an entry here. Okay, but let's come back to it later. So my subject makes some entry, contributes 16 to a project, clicks okay, and then they have to wait, wait until the experiment continues. Now I need to switch, switch to the second subject, and the second subject also needs to make an entry, okay? Um, while we're doing that, let, let's maybe quickly switch back to the set tree and look uh, at the subjects table by clicking run subjects table. What do we see here? 
the subjects table is where all the information about the individual subjects is saved and it we, in it we can see in real time um, well all the values all the all the variables of the different subjects and we see for example the first two subjects they've already made their contribution entries subject one um, contributed 16 subject two contributed five and the other two have not yet made their choices so that's why their uh, contribution um, column or variable still holds the initial value that we initialized it with which was minus seven 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 and we can immediately see that these people have not made their choices yet also here in this subjects table and you can do this while the experiment is running so let's switch back to the subjects and get this done so the third subject doesn't contribute anything and the fourth subject decides to contribute 20 the full amount and um, before I click OK, let me maybe show you something else. Um, I can click Run again and say Stop Clock. And that allows me to stop the time from continuing. Um, let me restart the clock for a second. Now I click OK here and the time is counting down. So when, when I want to look at this um, with enough time to spare, Maybe I don't want the time to run out because after the time runs out, the next period begins or the experiment ends if it's the final period. So I head back to set tree, click run, stop clock, or I hit F12. So I do that. And if I now go to the clients table, I can see that the time is stopped. And if I head to my subjects, I also see that the time is stopped and I can look at them um, in peace basically. So the first subject contributed 16, the total contributions were 41. And so this subject um, retains four from um, the initial endowment, plus they get some, um, con some, some payout from the joint project, which in this case is 16.4 and together that's 20.4. Let's click continue so the experiment can end. Um, so for this subject, this subject is finished and waits for everybody else also to finish. Now subject two. Subject two only contributed five, so they get um, a higher payout because they kept more of their initial endowment, but they still get the same uh, fraction of the, the total, the, the, the sum of all contributions. Yeah? Multiplied with the efficiency factor of 1.6. Okay, subject three, um, well, Contributed zero gets the highest amount, okay? And subject four only gets the 16.4 from the joint project um, and nothing uh, from, well, and, and, and keep, retains nothing from his or her own contribution, uh, sorry, endowment. Now to go back again to the set tree. Um, if I now click OK for the final subject, what will happen is that we will start into the next period. So we'll have to click for everybody again through the whole thing. If I'm happy with my testing so far, I can skip that and can click Run, Stop after this period, which means um, when this period is over, instead of going to the next period, Setri will just stop and will allow me to edit the program again, because maybe step out here. If I want to change this program here and I double click, nothing happens. I cannot open this program while the experiment is running. So for to edit something, I need the experiment to stop. So let's click um, run, stop after this period. Then I head back to my client four, I click continue. They get the, the waiting screen basically, but the experiment's over. I can see that in the clients table Everybody is ready for the next experiment. Um, and I can open and, and edit all of the program again. Before we continue, let me quickly recap some important issues for testing. First off, if you open your, uh, particularly if you open your set leaves in full screen mode, so you just click set leaf without using, for example, my grow leaves.bat file then they cover the whole screen and it's hard to switch between different set leaves. But you can always do that using the Alt-Tab uh, combination. 
that's a normal Windows combination that allows you to switch between different programs and it also allows you to switch between set leaves. You can close a set leaf by um, pressing Alt F4, also a normal Windows shortcut, so you can use this for any program. The clients table, as I showed you, um, shows you which clients are connected. So that's the state before you run your first treatment. You just opened your set tree, opened your treatment, you have not run it yet. This is while it's running. You can see the time remaining in the current stage. And you can see that subjects two and four, they still have these asterisks here. They are still active in this stage, which means they have not completed their choice here. Players one and three, they are already done. They're already waiting for the others to finish uh, so that all of them can continue. And finally, once the experiment is over, the treatment is over, Setri will display this ready state, which just means I'm waiting for the next treatment to start. And in, in this state, like in, in this state here, you can actually modify your program. While it's running, you cannot do any coding. Furthermore, you can pause the time uh, pressing F12 and resume or continue running uh, with Shift F12. That's helpful for testing. I'll show you in the next slide a uh, good application for that. And you can use the run stop after this period command to tell Setri not to continue for all of the periods that you set in the background, but actually stop after the current period. So to test at your leisure, what I recommend is to um, set the stage timeout. And um, maybe you noticed it when you created a stage, for example, a contribution entry stage or the profit display stage, there was a, a little field that said, um, timeout and it said 30 and that means the period runs for 30 se uh, sorry the stage is displayed for 30 seconds the countdown begins at 30. now i would suggest making this timeout very short for example only two seconds and then starting the program using f5 and immediately pausing the time pressing f12 this way um, you have as much time as you need you can test at will and when you're done on the current screen, you can resume and let, let uh, Setri run again by pressing Shift F12. And that means from then on, it takes very shortly, only two seconds, for example, um, to, to go to the next uh, stage. Otherwise, you will all, always have to wait for these 30 seconds to elapse before you can go to the next stage. And if you have multiple stages, and you want to test the final stage, then it's very annoying to have to wait for 30 seconds for each of the uh, preceding stages. Um, and that's it. So to quickly run through our experiment again, this is the contribution entry stage and screen. Uh, from there, subjects get to the profit display stage. And while they're doing that, in the subjects table, we can see what they're doing. And one thing I forgot to mention is that if you encounter these 99999 um, entries in your subjects table, um, they have a specific reason. What you see here in the, in the um, heading of this column is time OK, contribution entry OK. This is uh, a, a variable that Setri creates automatically, and it contains the time at which in the contribution entry stage, the OK button was clicked uh, in the sense that it was clicked OK, it went through. But the problem here now is so normally you would then take a step back. Normally you would see the time that was displayed on the screen when the subject, well, we were actually in the contribution entry, when the subject clicked the button. So if they click the button when it says 27 here, this variable would say 27. The 9999 comes from if we stop the time right at the beginning of the experiment. Remember, we can stop the time in set tree, um, and then no time is yet being displayed and it, cor uh, it saves the time as this value just so you're not surprised when you encounter this value in your subjects table or your output files. So now that we've run our program, let's see what we got for our trouble. Um, on your hard drive, usually in the 
in the same folder as the set trees, set tree.exe is located in. You will now find a file that has the extension .xls and has the current year, the current month, the current day, the hour where set tree was started and the minute where set tree was started as the file name. And here I've created a sample file for you, um, which as you can see was created on the 7th of July, 2009. And what it shows you is what this, um, this file could look like and will look very similar for you. So you can see the subjects table here. So this column here shows you the table. Uh, and we haven't talked about tables yet, so let's focus on the subjects table. We already saw this during the, um, the test. Um, you can see the, the variables we created, like the efficiency factor, the endowment. You can see the contributions that people made. And you can see the profit that they got in this period. And then what you also can see is this is period one. In the second period, you see the same table again with maybe the new choices that people made. But also you can see that the profit is added up in this total profit variable. Yeah? And so all the, um, all the outcomes of your experiment are saved in this .xls file. And this is the main file that you will need later on for your analysis. Now, no set tree experiment is complete without a questionnaire. So you need to run a questionnaire um, at the end of your treatment uh, before you can actually get everything, all the, all the uh, output files created and before you can cl uh, close down set tree without set tree complaining. So let's have a look at this um, questionnaire functionality. Click File, New Questionnaire, and that gives you an empty questionnaire, which is basically, so in Setry you can have a set a treatment or a questionnaire. Both of these types, these are the two types that are available. We've already looked at the treatment, we programmed the treatment, and now we're gonna look at the questionnaire. Now, in the if you have the questionnaire open, then you can click Questionnaire, New Address Form. And what you get there is, um, you get this kind of dialogue window uh, where you can set which questions Setri should ask the subject. Now, in many cases, you do not actually want Setri to ask all of these questions. So, for example, in our lab, we do not ask for name, etc., uh, in the question anymore. We just give them the receipts to, to sign. So, we just delete all these values here, and if you delete these, um, then the question will not be displayed. So you can leave this entirely empty, um, except that you need to, to give the button a label, even though if you leave everything empty, except for the button, then this form will actually never be displayed. But it's important because, um, well, you, at least you need it because uh, after the subjects have passed the address form, um, Setri will write the so-called payment file, which contains the payment information for your subjects. So you need to have this form, even if it's empty and even if, even if it's never shown to subjects. So to get a complete questionnaire, you need uh, an address form and an empty question form. How can you create a question form? You again click questionnaire and then click new question form. So you need an address form and the question form, and then you're done with your questionnaire. Oh, and by the way, um, if you just double click set tree, then once you enter or once you create the address form, all of this will be in German. In my case, um, I changed my set tree language to English. I opened set tree with some command line options to set it to English. Then it gives you these English um, labels. But of course, you can always change the label to anything you want in the questionnaire. So once you've run uh, your treatment, as we've done now for the testing, you need to run the questionnaire. You just also click Run uh, Start Questionnaire or press F5 again. And once everybody, every subject has made their entries in the questionnaire, which in the case that you um, use an empty questionnaire means nobody has to do anything, then Setri will create a payment file on your hard drive. And the payment file, the file name is the same name um, as for the XLS file, but the extension is .pay. 
And this is a simple text file. Uh, it contains, contains information from the address form, um, like for example, whether they're interested in participating in another experiment or the name. Of course, only if you have left these questions in, otherwise this will be empty. And it contains uh, information from the session table. Don't worry about it, we'll come to that later. But that means it will have the subject numbers and in particular, the final profits here. Uh, and these are, if you programmed your uh, experiment correctly, these are exactly the amounts of money that you need to pay your subjects. And that's the main function of the payment file.